Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Isaiah chapter 53, we read, But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we are healed. Indeed, we say thanks to Calvary. And here is Tim Sturby to sing. Thanks to Calvary. Today I went back to the place where I used to go. Today I saw crowd I knew before and when they asked me what had happened I tried to tell them thanks to Calvary I don't come here anymore The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures, God's holy word, the Bible, in order to find the answer. Question number one, what do you do if your prayers seem to go unanswered or 
you don't know what to pray. I want to take you to three portions of Scripture, one Old Testament passage and two in the New Testament. First of all, Isaiah chapter 62 and verses 6 and 7, a fascinating passage which tells us to continue to knock on God's door to incessantly plead our case. It is speaking about Jerusalem, but this is so applicable to us now in prayer. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen all day, and all night they will never keep silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest for yourselves. It says, we who remind the Lord, we who call upon the name of the Lord, take no rest for yourselves, and give him no rest, give God no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Then the familiar story that Jesus told, Luke chapter 18 and the first eight verses of the importunate widow, the widow who came before the unjust judge. And Jesus said, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, saying, Give me legal protection from my opponent. And the judge goes on to say, Look, this widow, I could keep putting her off, but I'm afraid that she's going to wear me out. And Jesus makes application to that, that even as we come before the Lord, how much more will the righteous judge, if an unrighteous judge will give in to the request, how much more will the righteous judge who watches over us, will he not hearken to our prayer? But then that second part of the question, you don't know what to pray. Perhaps you've come to the end of your understanding. The situation is of such a nature that you just, Lord, I don't know what to pray anymore about this. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. The Apostle Paul says, In the same way the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. How often we sense our own weakness, and particularly in prayer. The Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. When you don't know what to pray, at that point just say, Holy Spirit, I turn this over to you, you the great intercessor. Would you pray on my behalf? And would you with groanings too deep for words, would you intercede before the throne of the Heavenly Father for me? Now we're going to go to prayer right now. And I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Many of you call in or you write to us or you send us an email and you say, we pray for faith to live by each and every day or each and every week, whatever the case may be. And I want to say thank you Thank you so very much for your prayer support for us. That is vital to the ministry of faith to live by and the effectiveness of this work. But many of you also say, would you be praying? Would the faith to live by team be praying for? And then you share something with us. And thank you for that. But let us go to the Lord right now. Lord, we come before you and across all the miles of this great nation, from the east coast, the farthest reaches of Newfoundland, to the farthest reaches of British Columbia, to the farthest reaches of the most northern community. Lord, we call upon you and we would ask for your intervention in lives, even as the question says, what do you do when you don't know what to pray, we would call upon you for an answer 
to medical problems and to family problems, to marriages that are broken and fractured. We would call upon you for those who are looking for employment and those who are looking for wisdom from on high. Oh God, hear us and help us, we pray. Our eyes are set upon you, and most especially where there is a need for salvation. I pray that there would be those who would come to have their eyes opened, that they would hear your voice, and that they would arise out of their spiritual grave, and that they would live in you, that they would experience the new birth, what it is to be born again. So, Lord, hear and grant the request that we offer before you, even as we pray in the marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our soon coming King. Amen. Thank you for these questions for faith to live by. The Bible has the answer today. If you have a question, send it to us and we will use it as quickly as we are able. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi Taves now comes to sing Under His Wings, and Jonathan Cavist then comes to sing Something Beautiful.
was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful of my life. If there ever were dreams that were lofty and noble, they were my dreams at the start. And the hope for life's best was the hope that I harbored down deep in my heart. But my dreams turned to ashes, my castles all crumbled, my fortunes turned to loss. So I wrapped them all in the rags of my life and laid it at the cross. Something beautiful, something good, all my confusion. But he made something beautiful of my life. I'm very pleased to announce the delivery of a brand new CD, a music CD, which we have just released. It's entitled, Till the Storm Passes By. We think that this is a very fitting theme and very fitting title for a collection of 13 of our new songs for you to enjoy. Let me give you some of the songs which are on here. Till the Storm Passes By, the title song is sung by Heidi and Dorothy, Hiding in Thee by my daughter Ruth and also Matt Bowring, Restore My Soul, Rick and T Tim teaming up, Does Jesus Care by Jonathan, sitting at the feet of Jesus and others that you will enjoy. Ask for your copy of Till the Storm Passes By when you write this week to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Or you may call us toll free 1-833-367-3845. Also, our website, faithtoliveby.ca, has a Contact Us feature, and you may use that. All of our resources are always sent free in postage paid, and they are to be an extension and a continued blessing of the work of Faith to Live By's broadcasts. And now, Rick Bowring comes to sing, Praise You.
In 2 Kings chapter 6 and 7, we read about a great deliverance which the Lord brought about for the people in the northern kingdom of Samaria. Samaria was under siege by the Arameans, and cannibalism had broken out because of the scarcity of food, if you can imagine it. The people of God resorting to such barbarism. But here we find that Elisha comes and he says, God is about to do a great work, and the prices of food which have skyrocketed shall plummet by this time tomorrow. Some said, even if the windows of heaven were opened, could such a thing happen? Elijah said, Elisha said, though you will see it, you will not taste of it. At the gate of Samaria were four leprous men, these men, they were unwanted by anyone. They were loners. They sought each other's company because no one else wanted to have anything to do with them whatsoever. They start talking among themselves, and they say, look, if we just sit here, we will surely die. But if we go into the city, there is no hope for us there whatsoever. Let us do the unthinkable. Let us cross over to the enemy. Maybe they will have compassion upon us. Perhaps they will have mercy because of our desperate physical condition. But even if they don't, what do we have to lose? And so they get up and they cross over to the enemy camp. And to their great surprise, they find that there are tents filled with food and supplies and all kinds of resources. But the enemy army has fled. They go into one tent and they eat and they fill their hands with things. They take it away and then they come back and one of them says, look, what we are doing is not right. If we keep silent about this blessing, danger awaits for us, harm awaits us, and surely we will come to great peril. And so they go to the gate of the city and to the wall and they cry to those who are desperately hungry inside. They think that perhaps it's a trick, that the Arameans have gone out into the, the field and that they are waiting to pounce upon the people as they come out of the city. They think it's a trick and they say, well, look, let's just send a couple of people who will be able to check it out. They do and they find that on the way to the east, that there is strewn along the road all kinds of clothing and all kinds of things that people threw off, the army of the Arameans threw off in their desperate haste to get away. You see, God had sent the sound of a mighty army, and they thought that a great host had been hired against them, and they couldn't get away from there fast enough. That official in Samaria who said, if the windows of heaven should be opened, could such a thing happen? He tried to restrain the people. He continued to say, it's a trick. It's not what you think it is. And the people in their haste, in their panic, to get to that food that was waiting out there in that enemy camp that had been left behind all of those things, he was trampled down 
and he saw the people eating and being filled and being blessed and being strengthened because of the kindness of God, the kindness to them, but he did not eat of it. Here we have a powerful lesson from hundreds of years prior to Christ coming to be born of the goodness of God, the kindness of God, the mercy of God reaching out to people. But the devil would constantly say to us, God is trying to trick you. God is not the friend that you think he is. He is an enemy. And to cross over to him is utter madness. But God bids us to come to him. And he bids us to come and to enter into the richness of his love, to enter into the richness of his mercy and his grace, even as those lepers, lepers unwanted, uncared for by anyone else, they crossed over. I would bid for you to cross over to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Perhaps you already have, and you know the truth of what I am speaking about, that there is a goodness in God which is unparalleled by anything in this world. But some of you have not yet crossed over. I would bid you to come to the cross of Calvary. There's room there, and there is treasure, there is blessing, there is riches, spiritual riches such as what you could never imagine. Come to the cross and come in repentance and in faith to know life abundant and eternal in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barbara today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barbara would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 